coming up in this video. Keep your panties on, everybody. Do we have seeds? We hit seeded. <gasps> yes, seeds on the tip. I just cracked into the seed layer. Oh yeah. Oh my God. And I've just kind of exposed and opened it up. Look at that. There's a button hanging out. There's this cool, like, uh, some kind of vase with a bird on it. A privy lamp coming out. Oh my God. Take a look at the color on that thing. It's like a church window, just about. Burgundy purple color. Bottle Nid presents Quest for the Magic Lamp. Hey everybody, so as promised, here is the rest of the hammy digging saga with including the ultimate prize, that incredible pressed glass lamp. So that's gonna be really cool. And uh, just as a, a note, um, I got a bunch of dirt clogged in my phone speaker for this video. So the sound quality is a little crappy for the actual dig part, um, but just bear with me on that one and the sound will be back to normal. Um, after that one sequence of finding the lamp. Um, and then I have a little bonus video and then the bottle raffle for my patrons. So uh, thanks guys for watching and here it is. There's a big root right in the middle of my operation here. <laughs> That's Scottish. He's a Scottish mate. You fool. Hammy, stay on the other side of your fence. <laughs> Double Anything yet? <sighs> Come on now. One of these yards, one of these holes. One of them gotta have it. Hey, Hammy. Yeah. Tell me you're camera shy without telling me you're camera shy. Some roots giving you uh, some problems? Yeah. <sighs> oh yeah, you just have to dig around that. And then just and then just get it when it's you, know, you see more of it. Do we have seeds? Seeds? We hit seedage. <sighs> we got seeds. Oh my God! This means there's an undisturbed layer of privy poop down here. I've just cracked into the seed layer. Oh yeah. Oh my God. Yes. Okay. Seeds. We love seeds. All right. We got a jar. Yep, we got a jar down here. Whoa. Let me call in SEAL Team 6 for a special attraction. Oh. Yes, I need you. Can you pull it out? What do you mean? Right down there. I believe it's a mason jar. Oh. Exciting. Never seen one of those before. <laughs> Don't you lie to me. <laughs> Oh, it's got the it's got the lid still on it. Oh, check that ball. Ball. These oh. balls. <laughs> Don't you just love that age? I love that. It's, oh. it's not great depressing. Here, honey. Happy birthday. Yeah, it's got the lid on it still. <laughs> <laughs> no comment. As he tosses it over his shoulder. <laughs> no. <laughs> but the 1930s was a really cool time for somebody. It was very depressing. <laughs> That's what they say. <laughs> <sighs> oh, everybody's getting out. <laughs> everybody's flee, flee. The cat didn't come out of that use layer down there, did No, it? I don't think it did. I think that was just a little preliminary. I was hoping it was just new fill, but it has seeds in it, so it's probably part of the privy. I was in just one a couple <laughs> blocks away where God, it was like, 30s and 40s, like for the first three feet, and then it dropped into like late 60s, early 70s. Oh, oh, oh God, I just gave to, me a buck as I'm San Francisco oh, oh, yeah. oh. The reason why you sometimes find newer trash at the top of an older privy is because of something that I like to call the sink out effect. The sink out effect happens in four stages. The first stage is when the privy is being used and bottles and organic material are being deposited at the bottom of the hole. 
Eventually, the hole is filled. Then, several years or even decades pass, giving the trash and organic material at the bottom of the hole time to compress, causing a sink out to occur at the top of the hole. At that point, someone on the property comes along and decides the unsightly sink out needs to be filled to prevent people tripping and falling into it. So they fill it with more dirt and oftentimes trash. So if you're finding new junk in the first three feet or so of a privy you're digging, just keep going because it could get older. Oh, look, <laughs> just what I wanted to find. Cold cream. 1930s cold cream. Wow. I'm so happy I could, I could shit. Keep your panties on everybody. We got, got bought. Was oh, that a creamer? Oh, that's a Mexican prayer candle. Jeez, that's a jam jar. Jam yeah. I'm gonna sue Hamster for wasting my day. I think he just wants to spend time with us. Yeah, me too. That's what's going on. Hammy, you're such a ham. Oh, there's actually like a little layer. Oh, there's something else. Oh, oh, oh. Make it older. I know, let's uh... Only 30 years older. Crosser phalange. Big, like, weird thing. I can't. Right there. Uh, oh, God, that looks ugly. I know. Oh. <laughs> I'm not pleased. Oh, man. Oh. Hey, Clark. Oh. Oh, is, is that a buku? Did you just get buku? Injection buku? Or injection no, buku, buku gin, right? Is that one of those? No, it's something else. Monogram. Monograms. Uh, <laughs> uh, stop ruining our punchline, man. Uh, tooled top, you know. Like, uh, Better than a primrose. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, God. She's coming out. A mid. A mid, mid. Is that a swamp roof? Slick mid. That's a slick mid with that top? Yes, yeah, sir. What a weird. What? Oh, it's embossed on the bottom. What? Make sure to dump all that water it's a tooled off. top. It's oh, embossed it's like on the bottom. Dr. Miles I know. I think it says uh, private mold. Huh. No kidding. Yeah, we knew that. <laughs> it's not giving us much information. It looks like a swamp root or a Dr. Miles. Yeah, nerving. This is pretty exciting. Here's that stupid new layer. Page is digging, but it dropped down into an older layer, and I've just kind of exposed and opened it up. Look at that. There's a button hanging out. There's this cool, like, uh, some kind of vase with a bird on it. Looks like almost like 1880s, early 1890s. So we're gonna see what's in there. I already pulled out this Hoyt's German Cologne ripoff. This is kind of cool. I don't know what it says because I can't see. Clear crap. But look, it's like a Hoyt's German cologne, but it's it's got that fancy perfume shape. How cool is that? We're gonna check it out. Shall we? Shall we? Shall we? Oh my god. Oh god. Liquor bottle of some kind. Plate. Yeah, that looks pretty cool. Um, I'll expose it more. Let me get all the glass up around it. Yeah, we don't want to pull that. There's gonna be some other stuff. Whoa, there's something right there. Oh, damn it, I hate when it moves. Damn it. Ooh. Yeah, when it moves like that, it's screwed. But this one looks like it's whole. Electric bitters, I bet. Okay, here's some extraction. Ooh. I think that's an electric bitters. It is electric. Great name on an 1880s bottle there. Electric bitters. Oh, fuck. Fuck <sighs> you. Uh. 
and some light electric bitters. Oh yeah. <laughs> Looks like a really light one. Real close call on that one. Yeah, too bad. Chicago. Great name. Honk. In the 1800s, bitters was used as a medicinal tonic and was claimed to cure everything from headaches to constipation to liver and kidney diseases. What made Buckland's electric bitters stand apart from the rest of the patent medicine products at the time is that Buckland claimed that he treated his tonic with electrically generated ozone gas, which was known at the time to have antibacterial water purifying properties. Whether or not Buckland was telling the truth, his label depicting the electric treatment that his bitters product supposedly underwent made it wildly popular, especially among people of the 1800s who knew all too well about the dangers of waterborne diseases. And if Buckland's claim that ozone was used in the manufacturing of his product has truth, then unlike almost any other quack medicine of the time, his electric bitters actually did serve the purpose of killing bacteria and possibly saving the lives of thousands of his customers. Got an old lamp, a privy lamp coming out. Whoa, that's a privy lamp. That's a privy lamp, man. Is that like colored? Oh my God. Oh, it's pink. Oh my God, it's a pink privy lamp. Dude, that's so cool. Dude, pink privy lamp. Somebody like, yeah, didn't mean to do this. <laughs> they were like, yeah, it's pretty much intact. A plate might have hit it back there, yeah. An old plate impact, but other than that, wow, look at the pink color. Oh my God, that's so cool. Wow, the whole thing's intact. Now that's a cool piece of decorative glass, man. Wow. Let's see it again, show me the sugar bowl. Oh, wow. Is it, it's intact? It is. That's really awesome. Mm -hmm. I've never seen anything like that before. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, air shampoo, Ned. Ah, yes, the old air shampoo. An air from the lair. 1890s, late 1880s. Surrounded by broken plates. I don't know how the hell that didn't get busted. Yellowware. Wow. Yeah, boy, that was an accident, right? Yeah. Somebody's like, oh, I can't see out here. Oh no, my purple lamp landed in crap. Look at this, it's another lamp. Jeez. Someone must have been blind living here dropping all these lamps into the privy every time they walked out to the pit. <laughs> oh, that's great. Good for us. Man, this hole's taken so long. I think we're gonna have to come back tomorrow. Holy crap. Okay, you're gonna get your beauty sleep and then we're come back, you're all fresh. Check my back. Nice daylight for you. Sleep in. <sighs> your favorite thing to do. Totally. All right, we'll see you tomorrow, everyone. Ah, day two. Oh, yeah. what's for sale there, patent medicine salesman? Oh, it's not for sale. This is the uh, the price of entry. <gasps> if you want to go to this uh, open 1880s hole with blocks sticking out, just waiting to be pulled out. If you do really well on the quiz, 
Thelma can come too. What? Oh, oh, who, me? You. Yes. Well, uh, but let's go for all that. <laughs> okay, okay, so I have to take the quiz? Yes, yes, there are. 11. Let's just say 10. One is a bonus round, okay? Okay. See, you have to score at least 8 out of 10 to be able to go. Plus. If you get 10 out of 10, you get to ride in the front. Oh. <laughs> if you get the 11th, the bonus round, you, you both, you and Thelma both get free burrito, super burritos at the end of the day. Oh my God. All right. All right. Game on. High stakes. Are you man enough to face... Hamsters Shard Challenge. Where do you want to start? Which end? Uh, I'll on? start at this end of the medicine yeah. wagon. Okay, well, there's some real, oh, really. Oh, oh. These are the. More oh, those are the hard ones. ones. Okay, yeah. okay. Let me start at this end. Yeah. Okay. Um. Uh, Puce Master Ink with a poor spout. Okay. Yep. Yep. Not. Not. Uh, is that is that desert purple? No, no, it's no. It, no, it's not. That's church window purple. <sighs> yeah, unbelievable. <sighs> it's not some puce either. That thing is like burgundy. Oh my god! Show that to to uh, Belmont. I'd that, call that. I'd call that a maroon. Look at look at that in the light. That's that would be all time killerest color for a master. Oh yeah. And next we have this green piece with some. Funny, funny indented panel. Oh, it's, and it's. <laughs> oh yeah. What do you think? I believe that would be a green liqueur's lighthouse bitters. Correct. Okay. What years on this one? That's probably a '67 to '69 one. It's not yellow green either. That would have been a, just a blown at an all-time winner. Pacific Glass Works. San Francisco. Oh, I recognize <laughs> this. That would be a Gaines in a really nice color. You're gaining on the quiz. <laughs> a Gaines whiskey cylinder. What a color. Wow. This actually um, was actually Old Crow whiskey, the very first version of Old Crow. Oh. Which is still bottled today. Yeah. W. Gaines was the original agent for Old Crow. Okay. Yeah, and then Livingston and Company uh, we're the agents for the West for it. I'm green with envy. I bet. Yeah. Oh, oh my God. Mm. It's almost like a mixture of green and the color of your hair. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a really loud color. Red and green. Yeah. Okay. Oh, oh, the Emphrisius. Okay, okay, yeah. All right, Paige, can you say that very quickly? Emphrisius, 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 Emphrisius. Right. So it's Frisius? <laughs> Frisius or Frisius? So remind us, this is the uh, schnapps. That's that mums. Uh, mums schnapps or mums tonic elixir or something like that. It's an 1850s Gold Rush Square. There's a really good article online about him and, and his product. SHM superior, truly superior. In a catch, catch that one in superior the color. Yeah. That would have been the superior of all superior handmade bourbons, SHM. Oh. Are any known in this color? No. I think this is getting more difficult. Who's your mother? Now. It's getting more difficult. Uh oh, oh yeah. Get free tacos uh, on the I, line. I, I, think, I think the bonus burrito is, is going to be off the table. You can always pass and come back to it, too. Okay? We run a very fair game show here. <laughs> We'll get back to you on the Constellation Prize. I know what this is. Horizontal Wormser. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. I, did, I, thought oh, that one would, I thought that one would get you for sure. Oh, man. And it's green. Pure green. Because <laughs> first I thought it was a square, but then it had a little bit of a shape to it. Yeah. And so that's a Horizontal Wormser large size pint. It's 1868 uh, whiskey flask. Wormser Possibly Brothers. 18, it's like 66, 67. Old Sachems? Ooh, wigwam tonic. Color. It got wigwammed, all right. Oh. Two feet down in the root layer, my, my buddy was chopping roots with stuff. Oh, wow. Blew it up. What? Was it nice. was it was full? It was perfect. No. Look at all the fresh breaks. Uh, oh, no. Tragic. No, that's about the color of that lamp. Stupid yeah. idiot breaking stuff. 
All right. You're batting a thousand. That's the New Almaden Coke bottle. Coke bottle dump, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's, that's the Coke bottle dump we want to be in there. So this was the original bottle, New Almaden Vichy Water, California, from the New Almaden Springs. <laughs> Coke bottle slash Coke mercury. Coffee, that guy. The originals they thought they were in 1915. Really? Yeah. This 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 uh, glass uh, mold maker at the Pacific Glass Works had pretty much already made one, but with a bob top. And this was the new Almaden hobble skirt. Yeah. Yeah. The pinched waist, corseted waist. Yeah. And that was it was designed to be a sexy woman, basically. Basically, yeah. Yes. When this thing was rolling down the the old dirt road, bumpy dirt road, and the stagecoach. These things were swaying in the case like a woman's hips. <laughs> yeah. All right, next. Is that the Australian cutter? Yes, mate. What? Oh, That's the kangaroo cutter? You actually have one? Ooh. A cutter whiskey. Yes, a ruse. Soul agent. And it's not a ruse. This is the real thing. This is just AP a freak. AP Holding was just such a badass whiskey distributor and wholesaler after he conquered Portland and Seattle well, after originally conquering San Francisco he decided to branch out to Australia crikey yeah crikey Sydney yes and uh yeah he's got his name on this bottle and he had the agents over there Baron Mox Moxham and company Sydney Soul Agents for Australia that's and it's crazy got a kangaroo on it Cutter whiskey with a kangaroo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, check that out. As far as I know, all the whole examples have been um, dug in Australia. This broken one was found in the Bay Area. Wow. So it kind of it just made it back this way on a ship. Yeah, maybe some back and forth travel. Unless he, unless Hodling uh, had a little stash here in his Jackson Street warehouse, you know. Holy shit. It says. Australasia. Oh, Australasia. Oh, that's a good catch. Yeah, I forgot about that. I don't. I couldn't find the piece that had the kangaroo on it. Too I think bad. It was maybe you just catching the, the the feet. Yeah. There's the feet that'll kick yeah. you right in the butt. And yeah. jelly. Yep. God, oh. I thought that one would get you for wow. sure. I'm the shard whisperer, man. You can't mess with me. Yeah. There were two oh. broken ones in that hole, and that one would have been just like the. Oh, boy. Yeah, boy. nice, clean, clear oh, Western glass. Yeah. Look at the color. Oh, yeah. you know, I knew that because, you know, I uh, I dug one. <laughs> it's one of the earliest glass, about the same age as the, the piece, the other piece in your hand. It's a big, fat Union or, Oval, yeah. late 1860s yeah. whiskey this flask one and this from one San both Francisco. Big, fat ones from this, about the same era. All right, you're down to the last one. We're in the bonus round now, folks. Uh oh. We're in the bonus round. Burritos are on the line. <laughs> For this little piece, I got all the other ones. I know, 10 out of 10. The 11th one, that is the bonus one. How about round. the 11th one is a free Mexican coat? Shit. You're already I getting about the, this uh, one. Yeah, the, the burrito coat. I gotta think. Okay, do the song. Dun, 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 dun. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, Bottle Ned, we need an answer. Okay, I have my final answer. All right. One shard separates you from a super burrito. One shard. I say that this beautiful piece... This is your final, final answer. First, I, I looked at it like this, and I was like, what does that say? Is that a Y-I-N? But then I, you know, I, I thought, maybe I should turn it around. And you know what it kind of looks like? A yellow gaslight ammonia! <laughs> oh, yeah! Johnny, tell him what he's won. Johnny? Johnny? <laughs> you won! <laughs> A super burrito, oh. complete with salsa and Mexican soda of your choice. Whoa. <laughs> That's right. Wow, man, you you pulled it up, pulled it out. I really thought this this one would stump you, but nope. nope. You know, I should have known. You just can't gaslight bottle net. <laughs> Patent pending. So here's like the coolest thing that we were able to find so far. 
This is an old whale oil pressed glass, early American pressed glass, EAPG they call it, whale oil lamp. Jeez. And it's very fancy, but what this sets this apart from your average whale oil lamp is, take a look at the color on that thing. The color. It's like a church window, just about. Oh, just a, it's That's not sun colored. This is the way it was blown. Just this purple, burgundy purple color. Oh my God, that's crazy. Yeah. So how would it work? The, the oil would go in there? Yeah, this is the font and it's a one piece setup. The base and the font are all one piece. And a lot of times there'll be two separate pieces and they're connected by a brass coupling. So pretty much the only thing that's missing is the little brass piece with the uh, valve, the wick valve. Yeah. And then that had three prongs on it to hold the, the chimney, the clear glass chimney. The lamp's pretty much all there. It's all just, of it. Just missing yeah. the chimney and the valve. Which, Sweet. Which those are always uh, gone, when you, at least when you're digging. <laughs> and now we're going to do a recreation of how that lamp ended up in the privy <laughs> using our reenactment actor, Privy Pokin Page. Oh, Good thing I brought my favorite, prettiest lamp out here for my midnight shift. I hope I don't drop it. Whoa! Well, I hope at least someone will dig it up 150 years later and appreciate it as much as I did. So here's another one that's more typical. It's it's not all one piece pressed glass. Normally, this is the, what you'll see. The base either made out of milk glass, marble, or even iron. Mm -hmm. And then it's got a brass coupling that, that couples the base and the font together. Mmm. Mmm. And then that's pressed glass font. Yep. That's how old about that one. That looks kind of like it's an old probably one. Turn of the century ish. That looks like an older style. I found those in like 1860s holes. So they maybe they made them Just for a while. Based on the top part, part that it's like threaded in there. Oh, gotcha. Makes me okay. think it's a little later than than that. Got it. Yeah. Oh, so this is a whole unit. You didn't reconstruct this no, out of no. pieces you found in in different privies. Okay. Got it. This one was found in, in a in a in a building. Are you pumped up for this hole? Yeah. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> Get out the tailings. Got lots of broken chamber pots in there. Broken whiskey bottles. I know, this guy was really drinking. Cutter whiskeys. It's got some strength to her. <laughs> I want to get in a fight with you. Just look out. Don't piss me off. Yeah. <laughs> got some muscles, huh? Yeah, muscles. Hear that, Hammy? Yeah. Don't mess with yeah. Privy Poke and Page. You boys better watch yourself. <laughs> it's performing the cesarean section. Ooh, in Boss Farm. Oh. You can probably tell me the age better on this one than me. Does it have Whithall Tatum on the base? It's about all I yeah. know. It's not the early, the earliest square one, but I think it might be the earliest of that style. Bowman Pharmacist, Oakland. It looks like it's going to be a, a Woodhall Probably Tatum, so one, post huh? 85. Yeah, yeah, definitely an 80s one, though. The Whittle Tatum paint patent on a lot of the drugstores is 78. Oh, okay. Yeah. The Whithall Tatum Glass Company of Millville, New Jersey was one of the largest manufacturers of prescription pharmacy bottles and jars in the late 19th century. At that time, they were also the largest producer of flint and clear glass bottles in the world. Between 1878 and 1898, the Whithall Tatum Company patented at least 10 designs for medicine and pharmaceutical bottles and continued manufacturing glassware through most of the 20th century. Both the Whithall and the Tatum families were devout Quakers and therefore didn't believe in the manufacture or sale of intoxicating liquors. So they refused to manufacture bottles that were to be used to contain liquor. Which is ironic because in the 19th century, most patent medicines and pharmaceuticals contained some form of drug, such as opium, which is arguably a lot more intoxicating and dangerous than a glass of alcohol. Oh, yeah, it's one of those six-sided uh, stick and pours. Oh, sweet. It's got the nice cathedral arch on the front. Oh, yeah, it's got the embossing on the um, 
on the bottom. 1874. February 1874. Wow. Patent date. is where the label was. The gothic window mm -hmm. right there. And ribbed for everyone's pleasure. <laughs> That's a good one. Oh, here's a cool little sweet little perfume. Where? It's got the original stopper in it still. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's one, uh, Lubin from Paris. Lubin Paris? Oui. Oh. oh, with the stopper yeah, still in it? Yeah, it's got the little yeah. stopper nice. in it still. Normally the stoppers, when they're buried, they won't come out. Either. The dumper side of the hole we're on here, the, the bench usually was hinged where the seats were and they would mm. open that up so they could dump large amounts of trash. And There's a lot of plates back here. Just like a smash pocket and, and stuff. Most of the bottles, yeah. yeah. Except the small bottles. Yeah. The bigger bottles, they're, they're a bigger target. It's, it's, it's loose. Oh, wait, I'm pulling. Oh, yeah. Oh, nice. Oh, oh yeah. Cool. Oh, blue castor oil. Yeah. Awesome. Oh, that's beautiful. You know how catchers on a baseball team, they develop real cramps in their legs after they've been doing it for like 10 years? <sighs> what about 40 years like you? Oh, my God. I feel like... Like my legs feel like a, not like an old catcher, but like a f***ing horse that needs to be put out the pasture. <laughs> Come on out of there, ham slam. Yeah. Come like on out. It's almost like... Get into that glue factory, hammy. Yeah. Oh, shit. Oh, <laughs> Ooh, it's nice and gummy down here. <sighs> oh, you're the cleaner. You've cleaned out the bottom layer. I see what you did there. Uh, let's see what we got here. Yeah. Midget Mason, patent 1858. Okay. Some plates, cups. Turn of the century. Teacups. Oh, there's a little doll set. There's part of a little doll set right there. there there's a part to a doll set. A little mini, <gasps> little mini teacup. I found the top of that. Oh, you have the top? Oh, man. <laughs> it's so weak. Broken lightning jar. Busted. Ah. Uh, Jar style, yeah. Lightning jar nid. <laughs> Roots growing through bottles, classic. Breaking bottles slowly through the eons. Oh, Derringer. It's a shoe polish, right? Oh, yeah. It's got a cool shape to it. Looks like it. Another slick one for Ned Shid. Oh, that's a fancy schmancy. Yeah, what is it? Dimpled cup of some kind. Oh, yeah. Oh, fancy pressed glass, man. But they bought some relatively nice products. Hey, you dug up a little what, pressed glass, yeah. some kind of cup, fancy cup. Look inside of it, though. There's actually a bot inside of it. You're Somebody dropped a little bottle inside of this when they threw it into the privy. <laughs> yeah, crazy. That's actually quite cute. Oh, it's, it's an Ayers, Ayers pills. Cures liver ills. Someone fought back then. Oh, I'll just throw my Ayers pills in my broken, cracked cup. It's really crazy. Sometimes you dig up an artifact and it's been altered in some way because maybe like a person chose to say for, in this instance, throw a little Ayers pill bottle inside a 
a, a cracked glass. And so you're digging up somebody's long gone moment of a thought that they had. You're digging up somebody's idea from uh, 150 years ago, some dead person who's long gone from this earth. They had the idea to throw this little bottle inside a cracked glass and throw it into the privy. So it's a, it's a long gone thought. I'm not high, I swear. It's pretty cool when you think about it though, right? Whoa, wait. What? Oh, battery. Oh, drop it. Oh, that's not a grenade, but kind of is. <laughs> Ugh, nice. Lead and who knows. Oh, really? Yeah. What would that have been a battery? Like a telephone. Mm -hmm. oh. That just fell out of the the overhead? Yeah. What? Wow. It's got like violets on it. Like what? Room. Oh, I've never <laughs> seen one of those. It almost looks like a little pocket whiskey flask. Wow, but looking at that? it closer though, I think it might be a perfume and that's where the label went. That yeah. little fancy shield, recessed shield. Mm -hmm. It's got the Owens mark on it. So this hole's too new to be deco. I would say it's more Art Nouveau. Oh, yeah. which is what period? Pre-deco, it's right before deco. Like I think it's in the 20s, late teens through, the, yeah, late teens through the 20s. Deco I think comes in in like the late 20s and 30s it's probably a perfume yeah bottle, i think, think it's a perfume mm -hmm. bottle because it just has the, the floral the flowers design, yeah, yeah it's some essence of what kind of flower did you think it was i don't know violet but violet yeah so. that definitely was for a label right there though yeah and i've seen on this era bottle this these really heavy like almost foil labels they're they're, they're embossed yeah and, and multicolored. yeah well that's cool Wait, I have something quite less exciting. Oh, yeah. wow. A little ink or stinker. Yeah, a little turn of the century. Blah. Yeah. Way more than turn of the Whoa. century. Whoa, no thank you. Oh, Rah. Okay, that gets quarantined. Bad juju, oh. exactly. Oh. Oh. Oh, yeah, God. Spanish flu. Spanish flu. We don't want any more of that, Paige. <laughs> change course, change direction, change level. Oh, man. Oh, it's going through the entire thing. That's what happens, man. <laughs> Thumbs up. Thanks. Let's clear it out. Damn. I got attacked by the anaconda. That's what happens to all bot eventually buried in the ground. Roots will go th grow through all of it. At some future point, it's really sad. You got a square standing straight up on the wall, yeah. and another bot. <laughs> You're out of control, man. Mm -hmm. Holy crap! What are you doing over here? The magic happened. And held by a root. Standing straight up, someone just dropped it down into the privy, just like. Or it Doink. rolled off the cone, maybe, and then it landed. It didn't, couldn't make the full somersault because it hit the wall. Wow, there's a fence post that just missed it by like yeah, an inch. God. Yeah, you should see how close the concrete is to this. Of the bitters. Extraction of the bitters. Oh my god. Oh my god. Our favorite, the oh, hoss. The big oh. hoss. <sighs> Wow. Pleasure to meet you, Dr. How did it feel? Is an ID company on the bay? Yeah, yeah I mean, I do. Hey, not dump it in the oh, I love that sound. <laughs> You're amazing. The money shot. <laughs> Look at how close this stupid post hole was. I know, jeez. That's insane. I mean, there's, there's the hoss right there, that little slick spot. There's the post hole. Yeah. <laughs> inches, mere inches. Into the half. That's a miracle hoss right yeah. there. <laughs> oh, guess what time it is, Hammy, now that we're all done with the dig. Taco time? Free taco time. Oh. Guess who's yeah. buying? No, no, I, I don't think mirror. it's me. Let me get my mirror out. Okay, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I get yeah. it. Yeah. I get it. Oh, thanks, dude. 
Hey everybody, I'm doing a special follow-up to a segment in a previous episode where I found this really cool bottle from a small Northern California town called Benicia. It's this uh, blob top soda water bottle, if everyone remembers that from the uh, deep mud hole. So about eight videos ago, we dug an 1870s privy deep in the marsh in the middle of the night, and we found one of these BJ McGee Benicia sodas. I've come to a place where a very special man lives who is an expert in the history of Benicia. And he's going to tell us more about the history of this town as well as the history of this bottle. And that very special man is the Hammy, Doo -doo -doo -doo. a.k.a. Doc Privy, a.k.a. the Angry Hamster, Hammy. Woo, looking good, buddy. Enjoying this cool, cool down. Yeah, hey, cool down. Are you trying to touch my bottle? I don't want to make you jealous, but I found a, uh, a really cool Benicia bottle. Well, hey, you know, nice try, but you know, I found a few of those too, and I, I kind of almost always have one with me. What? What? Whoa, whoa! What? Oh, wait a second, you got one too? Oh, you jerk! Oh, you... Whoa. Oh my God. Look at those bubbles. Yours has, yours has some bubbles. But 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 mine has a, a, a big gloppy drippy top. So uh, mine's almost, is mine nicer than yours? Or is mine bigger than yours? I... And now it's time for a blob top soda link off contest. Contrary to what you believe, BJ McGee, BJ stands for something else. But, it's but actually Barney James. Oh, okay. Yes, yes. Yes. And, and Barney was located on D Street in 1867. And he was a lawyer who just ventured into the soda water business very shortly, like for like a year. These bottles are just so beautiful because they were blown at the Pacific Glass Works in San Francisco. And oh they my. normally come out of the ground just sparkling clean because it has the good. Monterey sand that they used at the glassworks. Oh yeah. All right, Hammy, um, what about a link off contest between our two bottles? Who do you think would win? Well, do we have an impartial judge? Hey, Paige. Lines <laughs> over here. Oh. Uh, hey, you big can, privy poker. Uh, I think we can. I think we can arrange something like that. Then yes. Right? Okay. We have a somewhat impartial judge here. Sure. Who. Uh, very good at uh, discerning the uh, aesthetics of, 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 of an early bottle and uh -huh. which one is nicer than the other. So, um, okay. yeah. So Paige, first of all, I want to point out to you that mine has a drippy top and it's, it's almost a 360 degree drip. It's also got a fatter top. It's wider and possibly longer. And Hammy's, it's, it looks skinnier and uh, thinner, thinner and Less girth. Look at those bubbles, though. Smaller look at those, tip, bu look at those bubbles. Oh, it does have some yeah. nice, nice yeah. air, man. Wait, look, spin look at it the around. strike, you know? Spin it around for a second. Let me see the bubbles in the back. Oh, that is. Oh, my God. Yeah, they're, the bubbles are. Mine's darker, though. Mine's a little darker, okay. I'd say. Maybe just a hair darker, but look at the strike. This has got the Helen Keller embossing. Oh. You know? You. I can, but, but Paige, with my eyes closed. But Paige. Paige McGee. Uh, that one top. does have a nice top. That is an unusual top yeah, for one yeah, of Yeah, the top. I think I will the give real question you. is, which bottle is going to buy me a steak dinner? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Paige, basically, like, which, which BJ would you prefer? <laughs> well, I hate to be lame, but in my eyes, they're tied. What? No, this isn't like a special class where everyone's hey, special. Man, you dude, you have to pick a winner, judge. dude. Give a, give one of us a gold star. I'm being impartial. <sighs> Sometimes you just can't decide. Yeah. Sorry. Eat it. Sorry. Uh, yeah. Well, uh, you know, everybody's a winner. Whew, that is a pretty nice one, though, actually. No, I agree. This is a really nice one. Yeah, th this. Okay, and now actually we're gonna do a special history presentation on the history of a really, really significant event in California's past, which helped shape this state. And we're gonna to go to the location where it happened. Sounds good. Okay. By the way, Barney was located just kitty corner across the street from there. From where? Where are we going? We're gonna to go to the Von Fister Adobe Saloon, which 
by the way, is still partially standing. Damn. Yeah. Okay, so we're here at the uh, site of the Von Fister Adobe store slash uh, saloon, where basically the state of California, the entire future of the state of California began right here. Hammy, take it away. Well, Captain Von Fister was one of the first to uh, settle in Venetia, 1847, and he built this adobe structure, which is kind of hidden behind this protective covering, but it is still there, most of it. And um, he decided to open a saloon because it was right next to Semple's Wharf, which is just down on the next block. Saloons were usually the first thing to go up in any town. <laughs> So it was a kind of a saloon slash store named Von Fister's. There was a notable event that happened at this saloon that was inside oh, this yeah. building that basically started the California Gold Rush. Can you explain a very, little bit? Very, very big event, you know. Kind of had, goes along the lines with uh, loose lips sink ships. Up at Sutter's Mill, the gold discovery, which everyone's heard of, the nuggets that were found by Marshall were reported into Sutter and Sutter sent uh, uh, a guy named Bennett as a messenger to take them to San Francisco to be assayed to make sure they were real and see how pure they were. Well, to get to San Francisco back then, UC Benicia was the place you would catch the, uh, the, the ship at. Bennett stopped here at Von Fister's saloon and he was waiting for the ship to come in at Semple's uh, Rock Wharf just down, down the block. And there were a couple other guys in there pounding back some uh, black glass ale they were bragging about this this stuff they had in their sack that they had had found while prospecting up on Mount Diablo. Coal. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> wow, impressive. Yeah. And uh, Bennett bit his tongue for a while because he was sworn to secrecy and he just kind of chuckled <laughs> like, you know, if these guys only knew. And then uh, he just couldn't resist anymore and he uh, pulled out his sack and, you know, he was basically like, uh, yeah, well, my dog has bigger fleas than yours, and now it rolls the, the gold. He obviously won that link off <laughs> by a mile. And uh, the rush was on, you could say, so, even before he returned back oh, to Sutter's Mill wow. with the, the report from the assayer in, in San Francisco. There were already people heading up there mining. Oh my God. Yeah. And John Sutter wanted to keep this discovery of gold on his, in his mill by uh, Marshall a secret because John oh, Sutter yeah. knew it would destroy his whole enterprise. All of his workers would flee and start mining for themselves instead of working for him. And his whole, uh, his whole kingdom would be lost. And it was, in fact, the gold rush destroyed John Sutter. Yeah, yeah. Because I, that... Ironically, he kind of uh, died a pauper. That's what really led to California becoming so populated so quickly and uh, people came from all over the world literally and San Francisco became what it was and they at first thought Benicia was going to be the big place and they even yeah. made it a state capital this enormous brick structure and B Benicia was actually the intended metropolis and, and all the colleges never... were here the gold miners oh, right the, the, the churches the churches the, uh, all the colleges yeah. this little town had like five the colleges barracks. in the 1850s yeah, it had the big army fort and the arsenal right there at the point to protect uh, the gold fields. Any ship had coming in had to pass by that. And all uh, this was due to basically one fateful moment of this guy, Charles Bennett, getting drunk and then needing to uh, participate in this link-off contest with the, the people that found yes. the coal that happened to be there at that time. Too, too much drinky out of those pondled black glass ale bottles. <laughs> that is just crazy. So if the ferry would have been like an hour early and he wouldn't have met those guys at the saloon. If they wouldn't have crossed paths. Yeah. It changed the whole history of California. Timing is everything. Same thing with digging a good bottle. Timing is everything. <sighs> Amen. <laughs> Here's a uh, little, uh, little peek into the, the restoration. You can see the adobe bleeding out of the, uh, the sheathing, the siding that they put over this thing to preserve it, but there's the adobe behind it. That's the wall. 
for the uh, for the old store saloon there. It's just being restored behind this canvas. Wow. Oh man. Doesn't history just make bottles even cooler? You know? Oh yeah. Like just know, you know, knowing history actually makes the bottles that you have come to life with magic and bottliness. Definitely, definitely. The BJ McGee soda bottle yeah. uh, has such an interesting history because old Barney James was located this right kitty corner across the street from where we're standing now at the Von Fister Saloon in Store Adobe. Wow. All right, Hammy, well, thanks for the tour. Better luck next time on the Link Off contest. Too bad you couldn't beat me. I guess it was just a tie. <laughs> well, <sighs> wait a minute, wait a minute. What? I have more than one pocket. Huh? What? Huh? What? What? <laughs> oh. Whitley, Whitley Houston's half brother, BJ McGee. Oh, you had that the whole time? You always gotta have an ace up your sleeve. Oh, you. Or in your back pocket. We have a clear winner here. The judge uh, concurs. <sighs> Do you concur? What's the prize? Huh? Punch in the face! <laughs> <laughs> Dang it, I knew you'd win that. I knew winner this would happen. All. What's that? What are you gonna take? What do you want? What do you You're want? You're BJ McGee. No, I'll give you a massage instead, though. Uh, see ya. Come oh, out. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Woo, another video come and gone, and I hope everyone had fun and learned something and enjoyed seeing that purple lamp come out of the ground as much as I did. Yeah, uh, now is that very special magical time when we have a raffle for all the people that have been helping to support me. My Patreon's up to $253 a month, so uh, <laughs> I'm really excited about that. And then I get like a couple hundred from the YouTube ad revenue, so. Yeah, I'm, I'm slowly climbing up there, you know, I'm gonna reach the poverty line in about 10 years, but um, <laughs> yeah, anyway, back to the the, uh, <laughs> the raffle. Okay, so the raffle is for a very special racist bottle. This is the Wakely's Cameline face bleach made of arsenic. And the real cool thing about this one, besides the little patina flex on it, is that it's still got some arsenic inside of it. So you can poison yourself while being racist at the same time and then be canceled after you die. Uh, so this raffle is for my patrons. Um, again, I really appreciate you guys and your support. So um, I'm going to just do the thing where I shake the jar with everyone's name in it who's on my patron list. And the winner is going to receive this beautiful cobalt bottle from the 1890s. Uh, Wakely's Cameline Face Bleach for making your face whiter so you can be racist in 2024. Because I know that's what everyone wants. So uh, <laughs> forget I said that. Okay, here we go with the uh, the drawing before I say something else stupid. Oh, shake it up real good. Okay, I'm gonna do it all for the camera so it's fair. It means the camera's gonna be shitty because I have no one else to film this thing. Gently place the zinc lid onto the ground. Place this in between my legs, I guess. I'm just gonna... See, I'm, I'm, I don't, the first one that's gonna come out, okay, it's gonna be, it wants, it wants to be this one. It's, uh, well, Relic Rangers. I think that's a YouTube channel. Sweet. Well, congratulations. And that's really cool that like a YouTube channel is helping me because you're a channel and you need help and I need help and I can't afford to give anyone else help and I don't know how you can afford to give me help. So I really appreciate it, Relic Rangers. Um, just, I don't have the words, but. I have the editing fingers that are going to keep making more videos. So I'm going to send you an email and make sure to get it and respond to it. All right, guys. Well, I'll see you on the next one.